Hello. Thought I'd talk today about the hidden costs of making yo-yos, um, specifically revolving around prototyping. That's a step that people don't really necessarily understand and definitely don't think about the costs of. You know, you can see big companies like Magic Yo-Yo releasing a yo-yo for ten dollars. It's an aluminum yo-yo, and that's really, really cheap. That's a different discussion because that's about volume. But what you don't see in yo-yo prices, especially the higher priced yo-yos, is the number of prototypes and time spent in designing. And this is where you can run into trouble if you don't test properly. This was the first prototype of the skater. We made two of them, which meant two batches of prototypes with one particular shop. And when I got them, ran into the problem where it never stops tightening. Something in the design of the metal with the plastic, it's not quite tight enough. They couldn't get that right. That was 600 bucks. On to another shop. Two more tests. Uh, do, do, do. Let me get these right. So you can see there's two slightly different designed hubs. This one has little bumpy grooves around it and those go right in inside with the idea being that it's kind of pushed into the forced into the plastic, plastic mushes into the grooves, locks in place. This shop, we did one with those and one without, both of them were perfect. Unfortunately this shop disappeared, so I was out another pile of money. Finally found a shop that could do it, snug, tight, everything's great, made the production run. But at that point I'm out I think it was about $1,600 just in prototypes on that yo-yo. When you're making 150 yo-yos, that's 10, it's over 10 bucks a yo-yo. A bunch of costs up in a hurry. But you have to do that if you want to get it right. And it was worth it because this turned out to be a fantastic yo-yo considering it's a wacky weird shape. So it was very much worth it. Another great example of that is the SETI, which is the one we just released. This was the first prototype. This was the second prototype. I'm going to see if I can give you a good angle to see the difference in the gap. You see that? First prototype, I'm not sure if it was a design issue or the shop screwed it up, but they ended up making the bearing enclosure too deep. So it ended up with a super slim gap, which gave me a giantly oversized responsive yo-yo. It was still enough that I could test how it plays, because even kind of semi-responsive, it gave me a good enough idea of how it worked. But decided not to work with that shop, because if it was our mistake, they should have caught it. If it was their mistake, they should have caught it. Work with this one was made uh, through Yo Yo Empire, and every time I send them a design, he takes the time to double check and make sure with their machining, their tooling, their all their stuff, everything fits. So that's how that came out. So that was two prototypes on that one, which was well worth it. Sometimes, let me pull out a Yo Yo that didn't require that many prototypes. Oh, Metalhead. Bad example. Also, two prototypes. So, first one, sharp edges, really, really aggressive cuts. Production run, we rounded everything out. So, second prototype to test that. And back to the magical shelf of yo-yos. What am I looking for? Right, the duck. Yes, the duck. This was the pro prototype run of the duck, and huge number of problems. Gap wasn't bad, and you can't really see it with this video, but the pads stick out just a bit, just enough to cause drag and slow the yo-yo down. The biggest one was this inner grind ring would cut your fingernail. So for the production run, we fixed the gap and we rounded out that grind, thumb grind ring, so it still thumb grinds great. But that's it. So that one, single prototype, ready to go. 
Did I get one prototype of anything? Yes. This was fun. Didn't even prototype this one. Showgirl, it's originally Troy Botner's design. He did a prototype batch that he kind of crowdfunded, which is how I went, which is what resulted in me going, that's awesome. I want to make that a thing so everybody can have one. All we changed was we put in a Lego hub. Should have prototyped it because the Lego hub wasn't quite tall enough. That was my bad. We didn't have the measurements right. I didn't prototype with the shop, but it still worked and was fun. So that's kind of one of those costs you don't think about when you're buying a yo-yo, but a company that's really putting the time and money into making sure they get it just right is putting multiple prototypes in and testing those out. So thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.